Hello everyone, I'm back with the rest of the process of the Sailor Moon illustration that I showed you the sketch of in my last video. I apologize that it took me a little longer to get it out than I was hoping, but I just wanted to give you all a quick heads up about some parts of this video which are super fast. I just wanted to fit everything in and thus I ended up like really speeding up some of it, so I apologize for any nausea that it might cause the viewer. So yeah, moving on. I'll just quickly discuss the cleanup first, obviously, since that's what you're looking at on the screen right now. So it's straightforward and I approach it pretty much in the same way that I have shown in my previous videos. And I focus mostly on just precisely cleaning up the shapes that I've already established in the sketch. I normally line everything using black, but since this particular illustration was so complicated, I actually needed to- I started using different colors for different elements just so I could uh, tell them apart and see where the overlap is. So I'm just gonna quickly explain the order in which I ink things and like how I tend to organize my layers because I- that's something I haven't really touched on before and I've seen some people ask about it. So usually the first thing I will ink is the face or all the faces of any characters present in the illustration because usually it's what takes up the most time for me because I just really want to make sure that all the placement is precise and the facial features are where I want it to be etc because it'll really help when um, moving on with shading and etc. So I, I like to just get that out of the way first because i know it will take me the longest and then i generally go from so from the hardest thing to the easiest thing so the second thing i do is the hair which can be pretty complicated and can also take up a lot of space on the canvas so i put the hair layer on top of the skin layer and i just go over the skin layer afterwards and erase any overlaps um, that way it's easier to keep things neat instead of trying to like figure out how things are going to merge i usually over ink slightly and just erase the overlaps later and after i'm done with the hair which is obviously on different layers for every different character in this illustration what i essentially ended up doing was making a different folder full of layers for each character so that i can easily switch between them because it is going to get like it did get really complicated when i got to the flatting part of the image but um i'll touch on that later so i mentioned starting with the face and i also ink the skin that you can see that's not covered by clothes on the same layer as the face because later on when i'm going to change the colors of the line art it's it will be it's just easier when all the skin is on the same layer so i can quickly change it to whatever color i need it to be and the rest of the details like i will usually just use my best judgment to separate the clothes um i try to not create too many layers just usually go going by separating only the elements that clearly overlap otherwise i can sometimes put two different clothing items on the same layer as long as they don't touch i guess it doesn't really matter how many layers you make the whole point of separating elements into different layers is that later on when i do the when i try to establish the flat colors and which usually involves quite a bit of back and forth like changing things tweaking colors slightly just to fit the rest of the color scheme i will often have to go back and recolor the line art to match it better so keeping elements on different layers really helps slightly speed up that process but it's honestly not the end of the world if you end up putting a lot of things on the same layer because all you will have to do just is to just be a little more careful when coloring the line art later so it's really up to you whether you want to use more or less layers i'm just trying to keep things kind of organized and trying to save myself time in the future but also not going overboard with like putting every single element on a different layer because that would just be too confusing Okay, so now that we've gotten to the flatting stage of the image, finally, 
I just wanted to quickly also mention in terms of layer organization, it's difficult to just have one folder for each character, or I guess it was difficult to do that for this particular illustration, specifically because all the flat colors still have to go, like all the layers for the flat colors still have to go underneath all of the line work layers because otherwise there might be like some awkward overlaps if you have i don't know if it's clear exactly what i'm trying to explain here but yeah theoretically if you don't want any weird overlaps you have to put all the coloring layers like the solid color layers underneath all the line art layers so i ended up making the i think i made a bunch of changes and i think i ended up having two sets of folders for each character um, which I know sounds kind of complicated and I did end up having like a million layers in this drawing But overall, I'm gonna say it wasn't that bad because since I put them all in layers It was relatively straightforward to go back and forth to edit the colors when I need to Speaking of which as you can see what you're looking at right now is me finally going back to actually edit the colors and finalize them after having finished all the random ugly earth tone um, flat colors. I didn't pick any of those for any particular reason. Usually I'll just pick a, pick a kind of contrasting color so um, it doesn't look unclear against any other color so I can just cleanly fill an area and that's how I pick the first flat colors. And then afterwards, so I'm just going to explain to you guys how I go about picking colors for flatting in general. There isn't like a whole lot to explain here but this did take me like a couple of days i think to flat everything which is really annoying um it basically took maybe like six hours or something on and off but yeah so i'm just gonna tell you how i go about picking final colors overall what i do is i pick all the final colors of the stage and then i typically don't change anything going forward past the stage only at the very end when i finish everything i will adjust the overall image but this is where all the color picking takes place which is why my process is a little bit um, stiff i guess for these types of illustrations but it does help to constrain the time i digress so unfortunately there isn't really much to explain in technical or theoretical terms because i don't tend to use any like theories and don't make particularly informed decisions based on like things i've learned i usually work strictly based on already pre-existing constrictions and just using my best judgment for what i think looks nice that that's pretty much as simply as i can put it so what are these constrictions that i just mentioned um that would be more or less the characters colors that are already pre-established so like since i draw a lot of my own characters they have a pre-established color scheme so like i will know what their hair color is what type of clothes they wear maybe if they're wearing a uniform and it's like if it's like my gloaming veil characters they have the, the uniform has had a set color scheme for years now so that's what i mean by pre-existing constraint so like if i wear for instance in this case specifically since i'm drawing these characters there's only so many colors i can pick like especially for their hair even their eye colors like there's they're already established characters so i will just make a quick decision on what color i want to use based on kind of what their color what the hair color already is and how it drives with the rest of the composition so like for instance uh i know that usagi is supposed to have yellow hair as she does in the anime and all of that but in the manga sometimes the illustrations have her with white hair so those are pretty much my two main choices and i couldn't stray too far from that obviously because then she wouldn't be recognizable as herself so i just went with a white hair because i thought that it would look nicer in this particular image so that's how i go about making all of my decisions as you can see i decided to put some colored highlights into some of the characters hair specifically i'm talking about sailor jupiter because i just thought i thought like a flat brown would be too much of an 
evenly toned area and it's a little too dark so i wanted to just put some highlights in there so i was just like well it's plausible that she could have green highlights and that's essentially the extent of my thought process when it comes to uh, choosing colors so i just go by what looks good and what kind of makes sense and that's about it. I'm sorry if that wasn't particularly informative, but that's just how I tend to roll when it comes to choosing colors. So now that we're at the shadow slash highlight stage, I'm just going to explain how I approached this drawing specifically. And it's not too different from my previous uh, videos or processes that I've shared with you guys before. I used the same type of approach where at first I made one shadow layer, uh, used a couple of gradients just to tone down all the local colors to bring the characters more into the atmosphere of the background and such uh, to make it, the whole thing look more cohesive. And then I made another layer over top of that. Um, like I've mentioned before, I set it to maybe 50, 60, up to 70% opacity at multiply mode and I will use the dark red color to add shadows so I, I will just slowly hack away at it. In this particular case I used the eraser a lot to create highlights which was enough. I, I, some, I will, I like, I, I think I personally prefer using the eraser to get rid of the shadows to add highlights instead of painting over and adding them on top with a solid color. And so I pretty much just went over the entire illustration arbitrarily assuming what the lighting might look like in this situation. <laughs> As you can see here, the main light source is the moon wand slash moon stick that Usagi is holding. And that's a decision that I made early on, pretty much just went with it. I was also thinking there might be a little bit of ambient light coming from somewhere beyond and some sort of pink light coming from beneath. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of the lighting scenario that I decided on. And so the rest of it was just using my best judgment to imagine what that lighting might look like. And for this one, I did not have any lighting references and just pretty much made up the whole thing. So. I significantly slowed down the footage in this part of the video so that you guys can have a better idea and just kind of look at how I go about shading things one one by one, the, all the elements one by one. And meanwhile, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit and tell you about, first of all, masking. So how I approach masking. I'm relatively new to using actual masking tools in photoshop or any other program i think i changed the color scheme of photoshop at some point so at first it was dark and now it's white but it is still photoshop but um yeah so for masking typically what i will do is i will create a silhouette that masks out each character separately and we'll also have one layer where I have the entire silhouette of all the characters that masks them out against the background. So however you decide to go on making these silhouettes can be up to you. There's several different manual ways of doing them. I usually just go pretty, like I go about it in a pretty straightforward way. I will just do it manually, like color in a silhouette of the character on a separate layer with a color, with a solid color, and that's it. And then afterwards I will just select it or make layers, like clipping masks above it, and that's essentially all I do. So I hope that made sense. If it didn't, I suggest you just YouTube clipping masks in Photoshop or whichever program you use because I'm not the best at explaining technical things and there's a ton of videos on YouTube that very clearly and easily explain how to use clipping masks. So yes, that's that's what I do for masking out the characters. And secondly, I wanted to tell you guys about looking for a time hack versus doing actual ma manual work. So as you can see in this drawing, it's super, super detailed. And as you may have noticed, I do tend to lean towards the manual work side of things. And I wanted to specifically mention 
the chain first of all so the chain that venus is holding i actually was thinking that you know what there's got to be like a chain brush that i can find and use and it'll be like way easier than drawing every single one of those chain links separately and as it turns out i ended up wasting like half an hour just looking for a brush to use and i ran into so many problems so first of all i couldn't find any um brushes that looked good enough to me to use for photoshop so i decided to go check out clip studio paint and so i went there and actually ended up finding some brushes in the marketplace and then they had some sort of like weird clip clippy some some sort of in um in app currency that it, anyways it wasn't like a simple case of oh i'm gonna spend two dollars or something and then like purchase this brush that i can use no it was like way more convoluted than that in the end it, it turned out that i can't even purchase brushes as i please and so i gave up on clip studio paint gave up on trying to find a brush for photoshop and i just ended up drawing it manually anyways and so the reason why i wanted to bring this up is Sometimes it honestly wastes way more of your time trying to find some sort of time hack, like time saver hack, versus just doing the manual work. But that being said, I also want to mention the few instances in this particular painting in which I did utilize some time hacks. So the first one would be um, using for okay, so using stroke, the stroke feature for making details on venus's blouse okay so at first when i earlier on in the process i think i tried to ink to like ink the venus symbol once to just draw it out with lines and it took forever and then i thought about it and figured that it actually would be way faster to just make a separate layer for those details on her blouse and add a stroke to that layer um i think it was just like I don't know five pixels wide or something in a slightly darker color and i just drew the symbols and the little details and they instantly looked a lot more detailed just because of the stroke so that saved me a ton of time it, it took me like less than five minutes to draw all those details and i also added a drop shadow to that layer so that it looked like the elements that i just drew uh, especially the ones that are on the sh on the sheer transparent um, part of her blouse. So to make them look like they were actually casting shadow on top of her skin, I just added the Photoshop function of drop shadow. And that obviously saved me also a lot of time. So there's things like that that I use sometimes. Notably, drop shadow and stroke are layer... Um, features or enhancements or whatever the hell they're called i'm not sure that i do use sometimes for small details and secondly i sometimes will copy paste similar elements so like for instance if i know that i have a button and like there's a certain button design and there's just going to be like a bunch of the same type of button i'll just draw it once and i'll copy paste the rest of them so there's basically no need to be a hero when, when it comes to things like that like if there's an obvious way to save time you should definitely do it but also keep in mind that sometimes if you decide to go the time saving hack way sometimes you might actually lose time trying to find this time hack another thing that i wanted to mention is that i ended up just finding an image of a diamond or some sort of sparkly gem and just pasting it onto Usagi's brooch because I knew I wasn't going to waste my time trying to paint a diamond and I think things like that are totally fine. It's like it's not a huge part of the illustration and honestly no one no one would even notice and even if they do it, it really doesn't matter. So all I'm saying is it's a good practice to use your best judgment to save time where you can within reason so i think that's about it for that topic i pretty much covered everything that i wanted to talk about when it comes to manual work versus time hacks and so i'm gonna go back to what you're looking at on the screen and you're pretty much watching the last part of my process at this point which is the paint over stage so here, I essentially just made a layer on top of 
everything else and am just painting over the tiny details and polishing away at the image that I already have. So I actually spent a lot of time on that particular step in this illustration. There was a lot of things that I wanted to polish out, especially the hair and a lot of facial features and such. And so I spent much longer on this part than I did. Also because I don't always have a secondary light source, um, which is the pink lighting that's coming from beneath. So that also required a lot of manual paint over. So yeah, this, this particular part took forever, but actually, even though it might not look significantly different as you watch me paint over these things, it's really cool to see just how much of a difference it makes when I turn the layer on and off, like later at some point. I, I usually do that just to see um, <laughs> the before and after so that I ha can have a sense of actually making progress within the illustration. Because I established so many things on different layers so early on in the process, the image kind of looks pretty close to what it would at the end in about like the middle of the process. So sometimes it's good to just, you know, remind yourself and show yourself the progress that you've made in the paint over stage. Anyway, one other thing that I wanted to mention is that picking the base colors can be a little bit tricky sometimes because putting lighting on top of them actually makes quite a drastic difference. So sometimes it's difficult to tell how a certain choice of color will turn out later on in the process. So in this particular case, one of the disappointments was actually Sailor Venus's skin tone. So I know that in the anime and in the manga, they, they all kind of look the same. They're like equally pale, but I like the different I, I like to have a little bit of contrast to make the image more interesting to look at so when i was doing the flats i picked a slightly darker skin tone for venus and unfortunately by the time i was done with the lighting it kind of became less and less apparent that her skin tone is different at all so that's one of those things that just you know it didn't quite turn out the way that i wanted to and you know i just moved on with my life and that's just too bad so next time i will see if i can somehow uh, either pick a darker skin tone or to adjust it later on or something like that i don't know so the point i was trying to make is that i can't like i deal with a lot of unpredictability even though my process is so clear-cut and it's very like controlled if you know what i mean yeah i just i don't like to spend uh, an infinity amount of time on tweaking things and trying to make sure everything is perfect is definitely not something that I am obsessed with to any degree. Like, I try my best to some extent with every step, but I try not to dwell on things that I don't think turned out perfectly. So the point I'm trying to make is that I kind of make do with what I have and my satisfaction level is usually like 70% or something. And I won't go beyond that because I think then that I would never be able to move on from a piece. That's kind of um, the point that I'm trying to make. So yes. The next step in this drawing is to add the definitive lighting from the moon. And that's kind of something that I knew that I was going to do, but I obviously left it till for last because it I knew that the white light would be pretty stark and it would just have to be painted over everything else once it has already been established. Doing the polishing and paint over is actually my favorite step of the process uh, because it, it really brings things to the point like it, it actually in this process I guess because it's not constrained by um, lines or anything else it's in, and it's a complete paint over on a separate layer I, I tend to really get lost in this process and often get results that I was not expecting just 
because it's not a stuff that I usually spend a lot of time on. I don't know if that sentence made any sense, but I do think that I um, made some decent progress in terms of face rendering. So I'm quite happy with these faces and I think they're one of the better faces that I have painted in my lifetime. So there's that, just thought I'd mention it. Also at this point in the process, it was kind of a test of endurance because I was so, so tired and I really wanted to move on. And you know, sometimes when you just look at something for so long, you kind of lose the ability to see it, if that makes any sense. <laughs> That's kind of what I was struggling with at this point and I was getting super lazy. So I, I did end up leaving things and I started slipping into the 60% satisfaction territory because I just did not have it in me to take it any further than that at this point. <laughs> Which is okay, because like I mentioned, you can't put everything into one piece, otherwise you're never going to finish it, you know? So I don't have anything in particular to say about this, but I don't want to speed it up any more than I already have because it looks too frantic. So I'm just going to turn up the music and uh, leave a bit of silence for once, like I almost never do in my videos. <laughs> So here we go. This is the part where I start adding in the white highlight and it was super satisfying because it instantly made the characters really stand out against the background. So that was great. Um, it's a bit of a meticulous step, but it was a lot of fun. I think it really, really tied everything together. And I wanted to mention that the soft glow that you see around the moon is also something that I did to the white highlight layer after I was finished with it. and. Um, achieving that is super easy. All you have to do is just duplicate it, make sure the pixels are not locked, and um, use a soft Gaussian blur on the layer above and just adjust the opacity of the layer to to how you want the, like, 
essentially just adjust it to what, whatever looks best to you. So you can make it more visible or less visible and that'll add to like the soft glow effect. And lastly, I just went around and added a bunch of little stray hairs to just make the whole thing look a bit more lively. So as you can see at this point, I'm just basically adding the very, very small details that I left until the end. There's some of them that I ended up just not drawing because I was just too tired, but I really had to add that Mars symbol earring because it was pretty key to have each character have their planet symbol somewhere. And I almost forgot to add it for Mars because it was just, I was just being so lazy and I, I should have just drawn it in at the beginning, but it's fine. It's fine that I at least remembered it at the very end and just painted it right in. And oh yeah, I actually just want to quickly mention that I kind of regret how I approached uh, Minako's blouse, like Sailor Venus blouse. I think I should have put a little more time into it and thought a bit more about the layer organization. So I should have just left the transparent blouse on to, to last and I should have done it above everything um, and not grouped it together with Venus's um, other line work because I ended up merging the image at some point I think and then I couldn't I was like too lazy to find the layer on which I drew the outlines of the blouse and I left it too dark because initially I was gonna make it kind of like a dark sheer or dark transparent blouse but then later I changed my mind to make it uh and decided to make it golden so but then I did not change the color of the liner to accommodate that decision which is kind of annoying so yeah that's something I honestly still sort of regret but I I just I couldn't be bothered at that point so that's a little bit unfortunate but all things considered I am surprised I managed to finish this at all because it took so long but yeah, as you can see, one of the last things I did was just tone down Asagi's hair a little bit to give the piece a little bit more depth and atmosphere. And I also ended up lighting, lightening the background quite a bit so that it's not so dark because the characters ended up being a lot darker in general than I thought they would at first. Also, looking back now, I kind of mildly regret that highlight on her skirt decision. I don't know if it was the best decision. Kind of bothers me a little bit, but you know, what can you do? Like it, it also looked too dark and empty without it. So I'm not sure. <laughs> like I said, at this point, I just, I, I did not think clearly and I was pretty much just um, looking for that finish line and that's it. And of course, like I mentioned, usually at the very end, I will merge the whole thing again to make it on one layer and um, just use the burn and dodge tool a little bit to enhance certain areas here and there so that's what i did at the very end and i also adjusted the colors a little bit just to make them a little more cohesive and that is it that is the entirety of the process for this illustration I really hope that you found this video informative and um, I personally think I learned a lot from this one illustration. I don't know if I'm going to attempt anything of this magnitude anytime soon again, but yeah, it was a great experience and I'm really glad that I was able to capture all the footage to share it with you guys. And if you're interested in getting a print of this artwork, I will have a link down below to my shop where you can find a small and a large version of this print. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'm really excited to get back into traditional art soon and I will obviously be sharing that with you as well. So I'll see you in my next one. Bye!